Welcome back guys. Moving on to the next section of this chapter, we're now going to be talking about uh, radicals. And to start the section off, I want to talk about how to simplify radicals first because that's going to carry over to everything else we're going to do. So starting off with number one, we got root 128. How do we simplify this radical here? Well, what you want to do is you want to take the number that's inside the radical and try to see what number that is a smooth square root divides into it. So what are some smooth numbers that can be square rooted? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc., etc. Each of these numbers, if we square root them, we're going to get a whole number, an integer. So root 128, 128, what can we divide it by? Well, we could definitely divide it by 4, but what's potentially a higher number that we can divide it by? Well, 128, we can actually divide it by 64. So what we would do is we would split this radical up into root 2 times root 64, because 64 times 2 is 128. And when you're multiplying radicals like this, you can just multiply the numbers that are inside the radicals. So we're splitting up the 128 into 2 times 64. Now, what's the square root of 64? Square root of 64 is 8. And then the 8 we can just put in front of the root 2. And then the square root of 2, that doesn't uh, square root smoothly, so we would just leave it as a radical. So root 128 simplifies to 8 root 2. Now, what if you didn't know right away that uh, 128 divides into 64? Well, we could have just did this in steps. So what we could do is we know that uh, 128 can divide by 4. So we could say root 4 times what? Root 32. 4 times 32 gives us 128. And what's the square root of 4? Square root of 4 is 2. So we'd have root 32 here. But then the square root of 32, we can simplify further because the square root of 32, that divides by 16. And what's the uh, square root of 16? Square root of 16 is 4. And then root 2, we would just leave as is. And then 2 times 4 gives us 8. So we still end up getting the same answer as long as we simplify all the way to the end. But uh, if you can find the largest rootable number that the number is going to divide by, then you don't have to do all these steps. You just uh, get the answer in one step. Moving on to number two, we got the square root of 50. Well, 50, that can split up into root 25 times root 2. And we know root 25, that's a rootable number. That's just 5. And then the square root of 2, can't do nothing about that. So that is the final answer for root 50. What about 3 root 20? Well, the 3 we can't do anything about, so we'd have to rewrite it. Square root of 20, we can split that up into root 4 times root 5. Right, 4 times 5 is 20. The square root of 4 is 2. And then the square root of 5, we can't do anything about that. 3 times 2, 6. Root 5, that is the answer right there. And then uh, 5 root 48. What can we split up the root 48 by? Well, we could split it up into 4. That's one rootable number. But an even higher rootable number is 16. We we'll split this up into root 16 and root 3. 16 times 3 gives us 48. And what's the square root of 16? It's 4. Root 3, can't do anything about that. 5 times 4 gives us 20. Root 3. All right? So that's the quickest way to do it. Now, what if we had 5 root 48? And instead of doing root 16 right away, we did root 4 instead. So we'd have 5, root 4, and then we'd have root 12. Because 4 times 12 gives us 48. Well, 
we got the square root of 4 here, and then this square root of 12 here, we can split that up further into root 4 times root 3. See that? 4 times 3 gives us 12. And now the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 4 is 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 gives us 20. And that root 3 we can't do anything about. So we still end up getting the same answer, we just have to take an extra step. But like I mentioned before, if you can find the highest rootable number that you can split that number, uh, that original number inside the radical into, then the simplification is only going to be one step.